there are some studies that show that cyclopurox shampoo, 1% and kinoconazole, 2%, you know, they might have similar efficacies or cyclopurox might kind of beat it out a bit. So in a clinical study led by Ravi C. et al., titled, quote, Clinical Efficacies of Shampoos Containing Cyclopurox Olamine, 1.5%, and Kinoconazole, 2%, in the treatment of seborrheic dermatitis, unquote, the efficacies of these shampoos were compared, right, in a randomized double-blind methodology over four weeks, and it also had a preceding two-week run-in and a two-week run-out period. So a total of 350 participants with 150 in each group, the cyclopurox and the kinoconazo group, and 50 in placebo, right? So we had three arms, 50 in placebo, 150 in both the cyclopurox and kinoconazo groups. So three groups in general. And the study's primary efficacy variables included changes in the area affected by seborrheic dermatitis on the scalp, as well as the secondary variables such as the severity of scaling and itchiness. And both cyclopurox and kinoconazole shampoo showed a significant effectiveness in reducing the affected area compared to the placebo, with cyclopurox showing a slightly superior reduction. Additionally, patients' assessment rated the cyclopurox shampoo higher than the ketoconazole and placebo in terms of overall improvement and symptom relief. So I guess cyclopurox was better at relieving the itchiness and maybe it didn't have as much of a drying effect on the scalp. The study concluded that cyclopurox shampoo was not only superior to placebo, but was also at least effective, if not slightly better, than the ketoconazole shampoo in treating scalp seborrheic dermatitis. So it's studies like these that kind of made me incorporate cyclopurox two times a week during my showering into my, I guess, hair loss stack or prevention stack. When it comes to my personal anti-inflammation stack, I use clobetazole propionate 0.05% solution along with calcipotriol 0.005% solution. And calcipotriol, by the way, is a topical vitamin D analog. And I use both of these two to help maintain a healthy sebaceous gland activity and also to reduce inflammation on my scalp. But I use them in a sort of maintenance kind of way where I just use the clobetazole propionate alongside with the calcipotriol together, right, on the same day. I use it maybe two times a week or three times a week, right? I used to use it every day, but, you know, sometimes... You know, you know, I don't use it every day, but I, at the very least, I try to use it at least two to three times a week. And the cool part about calcipotriol is that it has been proven to reduce the skin thinning effects that occur with long-term cortical steroid use, like clobetazole propionate. Calcipotriol is known to actually improve and make your sebaceous glands healthier as well. Calcipotriol has been used long-term for psoriasis. It's been safe right? People use it even when their psoriasis isn't actively outbreaking. They use it as a sort of maintenance therapy. It's also been used for eczema as well. And the understanding for this is supported by the study titled, quote, Calcipotriol counteracts betamethasone induce decrease in extracellular matrix components related to skin atrophy, unquote, by Hain Norsgaard et al., as well as the study titled, quote, long-term use of topical calcipotriol on chronic plaque psoriasis, unquote, by C.A. Ramsey et al. And there are other studies that I'll be putting in the description or the comment section for your convenience. Now, I do have folliculitis as well, as I noted in a biopsy from a year ago. So I incorporate my in my shampoo routine, I use 10% benzoyl peroxide shampoo alongside with 1% cyclopurox shampoo in the shower. The benzoyl peroxide is effective and can, you know, you got to be careful because it can bleach clothing as well. So make sure you rinse out your scalp and remove, you know, any sort of benzoyl peroxide you can see. Try your best doing this because I know some people like to use t-shirts to dry out their, their hair after a shower. I also use 1% topical clindamycin gel on a dry scalp once or twice a week. And this is to kind of like, you know, keep the folliculitis at bay or just overall prevent it. I've also made some dietary and lifestyle changes as well, but I inform myself using the Merck Treatment Manual of Folliculitis, as well as the paper titled, quote, 
scientific rationale for clinical basis for clindamycin use in the treatment of dermatological diseases, unquote, by Maria K. et al. And finally, I actually make use of one of Nizoral's lesser known medicated shampoos, and this is the Nizoral psoriasis shampoo and conditioner. It's the green bottle, by the way. At the time of recording this video, it's like a green teal kind of bottle. But I use this as well. So what I do is I get all of these shampoos, the benzoyl peroxide 10%, the cyclopurox 1%, the Nizoral psoriasis shampoo and conditioner, right? That one particular shampoo brand. And I mix them all together and I apply these shampoos maybe twice a week, three times a week at most, to a wet scalp. You have to make sure your scalp and your hair is wet when you apply this because it won't actually work properly if you don't do that. And then I focus on, you know, using my fingers to lather these shampoos into my scalp for about five minutes. And then I wash it out, I wash out my hair, and then I follow with a conditioner of my choice. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. And hopefully this video is helpful for you guys. And, you know, typically people with reoccurrent folliculitis, I know some people have mentioned this as well. Um, what do you do for reoccurrent folliculitis? Well, with reoccurrent folliculitis, you have to make some lifestyle changes. I did do a, an interview with someone that had folliculitis to Calvin's, actually, on my channel. I want you guys to go check it out. Um, but he did some lifestyle changes and it helped his hair grow back. But it tends to be that some people start with a course of doxycycline. This is a tetracycline. Um, it's an antibiotic. But they do 200 milligram either once or twice a day. And they, you have to eat it with food. If you don't eat it with food, it's going to destroy your stomach. Trust me, I know. Um, but they do this at, at once or twice a day for one month up to three months at the very most. If it's severe, all while using the shampoos that I mentioned, the benzoyl peroxide, and the cyclopurox, right? And the shampoos are typically used as maintenance afterwards as well. And just because you don't actively have an outbreak doesn't mean you stop using it. Just hope some people know, right? And there's also a premolast that has also been noted to help people recover their hair and scalp from folliculitis and folliculitis to Calvin's. And we can see this in the case report titled, quote, successful treatment of refractory folliculitis to Calvin's with a premolast, unquote, by... Mirjam Fassler et al. And the treatment used oral apremilast, not topical. The patient took oral apremilast, a PDE4 inhibitor, as a monotherapy without any additional systemic or topical medications other than 2% chorhexidine shampoo, which was used at the patient's discretion. The marker that helped the patient in this study was the rapid suppression of neutrophilic inflammation as evidenced by the resolution of the itchiness, the follicular pustules, the crusting, and the hair tufting on the scalp. The treatment led to a nearly complete remission of folliculitis to Calvin's within three weeks, which was confirmed by trioscopy, showing the complete removal of follicular hyperkeratosis and perifollicular erythema. We also see some cool biopsies over here as well. So that's pretty nice. So for those of you, you know, there's one guy in my audience who keeps asking what to do with reoccurrent folliculitis. What I just explained, right, is something that could possibly be employed. So go talk to your doctor. And remember, just because you do it once, right, it's likely that you will have this issue in the background in your scalp. So you have to make some lifestyle changes you know, I guess try to consume more omega-3s, right? But also using these shampoos twice or three times a week should help keep things at bay. Also, maybe consider asking your doctor about a topical apremilast shampoo or a topical doxycycline solution. That could also help as well. So just be smart, know what to incorporate, talk to a doctor, and yeah, that should help.